Hi, and welcome to my door making shop. I'm wrapping up my screen door project here in the shop, and uh, I really have kind of some, some final wrap up steps to do. I've gone ahead and sanded everything down to 150 grit. I thought I would spare you the tedium of watching me with my random orbit sander for an hour. I, I then need to ease all of these edges. These are kind of sharp corners, so I'm just gonna use my handheld router and a chamfer bit to ease those, those edges. I also need to use the router to cut the hinge mortises. I got some hinges and I'll use those as a template for routing those out. And then I'm also just gonna square off the top and the bottom of the door just cause there's a little bit of unevenness where the rails and styles met. And then I also need to cut the trim that's going to conceal the staples that are gonna hold the screening in. And what I'm gonna do is, once I've done all that, I'm gonna pre-finish the entire door as well as that trim before I put the screen in place. That way I won't have to cut in and around all the screen and worry about getting finish um, on the screen itself. And then once it's pre-finished, then I'll just tack the screen in and then lay that trim piece in pre-finished and then the door will essentially be done at that point. So it's a lot of kind of little detailed steps to finish this up, but I'm really looking forward to getting this door installed on my house. Before I can start chamfering, I need to square off the end of my door. There's a little bit of a proud section here on the bottom of this style, uh, and I just want to even that up, and then I'll be able to chamfer that nice and easily. So I've just put a square up against the side of my door, and I'm gonna square up my track for my track saw, and that's what I'm gonna use to even up that door. And I'm just exposing maybe a 16th or an eighth of an inch. I really don't want to remove anything here so much as just clean it up. There, now I've got a nice, clean door bottom. Now that I've got the top and bottom nice and squared off, I've got a chamfer bit chucked into my router. Now this is my plunge router, and I could easily use a trim router for this operation as well. I do have several smaller routers, but this one has dust collection, and I like to try to keep my shop clean if I can. So I'm gonna go with the bigger router. And essentially, I'm gonna go around the outside edges except for this edge back here. This is the edge the hinges are gonna go along, and I really don't want the chamfer there because I want maximum surface area for those hinges in the hinge mortises. And then I also have to go around these inside edges as well. And this is the outside of the door. The inside of the door where I'm gonna have the trim that holds the screen in place or covers up the staples for the screen, I don't need to chamfer that. However, I do need to chamfer the outside edges on the other side of the door as well. This is a fairly straightforward operation. I'm not removing a whole lot of material, so it's relatively quick. The router does leave a little bit of a rounded edge in each of the corners, so I do have to come back and I'm just gonna take a chisel and I'm going to use that to follow the chamfer line in using the flat bottom of the chisel. This is a crank neck chisel, which actually helps because the uh, handle doesn't get in the way. And I run that in and then I just do a little mitered cut at the top there and then I run the same thing up the chamfer on the other side, meet that miter, pop the piece out, and then I've got a nice mitered corner instead of that rounded over corner. I went outside and I actually dropped my door in exactly into the frame where it's gonna go. I had a little shim underneath so I know I have enough space beneath and above the door. And I just lined up 
the existing mortise, uh, hinge mortise marks on the door frame and then transferred them over to my door here. So you can see one mark here and one mark here. Now I went and I got some new hinges because the old ones are rusty. So these are zinc coated and will hopefully hold up to the weather a little bit better. And I just will place the hinge on the outside. And this is just the same exact process that I would use if I were fitting hinges for a cabinet, for example. So I just line it up to my pencil marks. And then I'm going to take my marking knife and just make a light mark there on both the ends. And the key is I'm ultimately just severing the fibers here. And then I'm also going to run a knife line down the back edge as well. If I can hold that steady. And then I have my router set up with a fairly small bit in there. It's just a flat bottom bit or a mortise bit. And I make sure it's the same height as the width of my hinge or the thickness of my hinge. And then that is what I'll use to mortise out the majority of that material. Now you notice for this operation, I did switch over to a smaller router. And really the reason behind that, I like the 690 for cutting hinge mortises because there's so much space in here that you can really see the bit and you really have good visibility into your marking lines. Um, some people will gang up two pieces of stock in order to provide a beefier surface. Um, but I actually, what I do is I cut the edges first and then I route out the inside and then I leave sort of a bridge on the front so that I have um, material all the way around until I cut that final bridge out. So it's actually a little bit quicker and I don't have to gang anything up. And I think it gives me vet better visibility this way as well. Now I've got all the waste chopped out. All that's left to do is drill my pilot holes. Next, I need to mill up the trim pieces that are gonna fit in these rabbits after I get the screen tacked in. So I played around with a couple of different profiles and this is what I came up with. It's basically just an OG and it drops right in there and it's the same width and height as the mortise. I actually, uh, I'm sorry, as the rabbit. And I actually left it a little bit shy of the rabbit because I want to allow a little bit of room for the, the space that that screen will take up. And if it ends up being a little bit lower and I have a nice little shadow line there, that actually won't be a bad thing anyway. So. You can see what that'll look like. And now I'll show you how I come up with this trim profile and how I cut it. And then I will go ahead and I have to cut quite a bit of it in order to be able to trim out this entire door. The first thing I'm gonna do is mill some stock exactly a half an inch thick. So that means I gotta start out by resawing and then running it through my planer. Now I'm going to send one of the boards through and I'm standing it up because that's actually the, the way I configured the profile to work with this OG bit. So it's gonna lay flat against the fence like that. So 
you can see now that I've put that profile on the edge of this board. Then all I have to do is rip that profile off. Now I have my table saw set up so that it will rip just the right width of that molding off. And the reason I do that is you really don't want to be running a piece this thin through your router table because it's bound to blow up on you. So this is a much safer way of doing it. And there is my strip of molding. All right, I'm back in my finish room now. I've got all of my trim pieces done. I cut about two or three extras that I'll need, um, but I'm just leaving them at rough length now. I'll cut them to final length and miter them just before I actually install the screening in the door. Uh, I'm ready now to put a finish coat on the door. I'll probably put one or two coats of finish on before I even put on the screen and the trim pieces. I've sanded it up to 220 grit now per recommendation of the finish treatment. And I also waited to do that 220 grit until um, it was ready to go just in case I had any like little scratches or nicks from moving this thing around and cutting the mortises and so forth. Now the finished product I'm going to use is General Finish's Exterior 450, and there's a couple reasons I'm using this. First of all, I like General Finish's products in general. I use them quite a bit. Um, it's also exterior grade, so it's supposed to be really good for anything like outdoor furniture or something like a door, and it has UV protectant in it as well for maximum protection of the wood. But it's also water-based. Every other sort of spar varnish um, or outdoor varnish that I found was all oil based and oil has a couple problems. One, I can't really finish it inside my shop because it's pretty airtight. And two, it's kind of a pain to clean up and it also sort of yellows over time. That's really not something I like on a white oak. So hopefully this will keep uh, a nice natural color on this oak and the UV protectant will, will keep that color consistent over time. Now, because this is a smaller project, I'm actually just going to use a brush and brush on this finish. Um, this finish could also be sprayed on as well, uh, but because of the size of the piece and the size of my shop, spraying would just be kind of a hassle. And I think it's going to be pretty quick and easy to brush on anyway, so that's the, the method I'm going to use. Mm -hmm. 